now proudly presented on SNME. That Sunday night's main event. Uh, heavy traffic during 4 5. Got a hustle on the own time. Color people every port side. We just people from the north side. Want some teammates at the shore fine. Winter ready on the full ties. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy George Mackay, live here, pre recorded New Frontier Bad Omens. And I'm sitting down with the one, the only Indie Hall of Famer and my first video cast, the lady that told me when I interviewed her the first time, <laughs> let's do video for this. Trust me, you're going to love it. And here we are almost 200 interviews later and on you're camera. returning on camera <laughs> because of you the one and only Lou Fisto how are you my dear I'm very good thank you glad this is still going in uh, 200 plus I mean am I 201 now you are actually you are actually 199 Oh, 199. Okay, 199. So one to 200. One to 200. But still, what a huge number, right? And if it wasn't for you, I'd be doing just the audio, and then no one would see the moneymaker that I have. Here you go. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm not gorgeous, but I'm adorable. <laughs> I have adorable features. Look at these little puffy cheeks and oh, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I got the cheeks that like, that 17th ant would love to squeeze yeah. when you're, yeah. True. Horrible. <laughs> so my first question. Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame. You finally got on Effie's Big Gay Brunch. I know, right? <laughs> and how awesome is that? That's one of my favorite GCW shows. I enjoy watching it. I loved your match. You guys killed it. How fun is that show? It's so much fun. It's, it's just a bunch of different people coming from different places with different backgrounds, just like getting together and celebrating, you know, uh, being different, being one of a kind, being like outrageous. Like I just loved everything about that show and I love everybody that's on that show. So I always wanted to be part of it. So it was very exciting. And I mean, finally I could pay homage to one of my greatest gay icons, Rob Alford from Judas Priest. So yeah, I was a leather mommy for a day. <laughs> so it, it was, no, it was pretty cool. I, I, yeah, I love Effie. I love him so much. Absolutely. And you know what the, the great thing about uh, Effie is, like you said, it's a whole bunch of people coming together, uh, celebrating their differences, celebrating their individuality, yep. but also celebrating this crazy, wonderful, yet sometimes up and down world that is pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is, I think one of the things that I love the most about pro wrestling is the different cultures and the different kind of people you, you find in a locker room. Like we're all so like different and stupid and crazy but you know so passionate about what we do um, and yeah it's just you meet all kinds of people which makes life interesting so yeah I mean pro wrestling is a big melting pot of everything you you'll find something you like you'll find some stuff you don't but it's always interesting <laughs> absolutely and it's one of those it's one of the the purest forms of entertainment where you always know where you're going to be. If you're a fan, you know that, okay, this match is coming up. I'm cheering for this person over this person because I love this person so much more, or I just love booing this person. And you always know where you stand. Wrestling is kind of black and white. There really is no gray area. If you do your job right. If you do your job if right. If you do your job right, it's supposed to be, you know, black and white and no gray areas where the fans are like, I'm not sure what's going on. That's something you do not want in your match. It happens. Yes. It happens to everybody. But yeah, it's it's really a place where you can be either yourself cranked up at 110% or be the total opposite. And then they either like you or they hate you. And it's great. Personally, I love when people hate me. But <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking uh, about hate and online community being so up and down pro wrestling fans are some of the most passionate but also in a lot of ways shape and form some of the most I guess uneducated in terms of what goes on even though there's so much out there of beyond mm -hmm. behind the curtain it's only behind the curtain what we're allowed to know behind the curtain so I, I want to talk about the uh, one of the my favorite interviews that you've done recently is uh, being brave enough to sit down with Sean Ross App, who is arguably an icon in pro wrestling interviews, next to Chris Van Vliet, which I see you on the CVV I, uh, before we know I'd, it. I'd love I'd love to do an interview with Chris. Like he's he's good at what he does, and I mean he's been going for so long with different you know again different kinds of people. So yeah, that would be very it would be cool to talk with him. 
I believe it would be too, and I believe it would be a great interview for you to really have that unbiased platform, which is something also that uh, Sean Ross Sapp does very, very well. He's very unbiased. He just wants to get the information out mm -hmm. there and let you decide, which is the way a lot of things should be. Talked about AEW. You were supposed to be brought in for possible coaching career. Mm -hmm. They said, well, come down. Let's do a couple dark tapings. Let's figure things out. And then it was a whole <laughs> ball of wax of a lot of things. Did you expect... Um, not so much the reaction from the fans, because I think once you put something out there, you're going to get that loving. But did you expect some of the roster, who I'm not going to name them because they don't, they don't really need to be named, but did you expect some of the roster to come at the way they did with the misinformation that they were bringing out there? Um, I was expecting a backlash because I knew it would be controversial. You know, I'm talking about some of your favorites, some people you see on TV that you might know and you don't know me because uneducated is really the best word and you used it. A lot of fans think that uh, if it didn't happen on TV, it never happened. But there's so much more that happened on the indies. Indies are not like the lowest form of professional wrestling. There's so much talent on the indie. It's like there's so many good hockey players everywhere in all kinds of leagues. But they will prob most of them will probably never make it to the NHL because there's not enough places or wrong a question, you know, it's a question of timing. It's a question of being right, right place, right time. All kinds of reasons why you don't whatever for me like I was always a step ahead when it comes to being you know the girl that does hardcore the girl the girl that did like inner gender and back then right now it's super cool but back then it's like oh my god why is she doing that this is so wrong girl girl shouldn't bleed so my timing was terrible but I wanted to push so much and you know change things mm -hmm. but in the end it you know it wasn't great uh you know, career-wise, but when you look at industry, like industry wise, the, the the wrestling itself changed completely, and now women can do all that without being uh, lowered or call names or beat up the way I was in the ring. Because now it's just normal. Like mm -hmm. they're seen as equal. They're seen as athletes. Uh, there's one or two people here and there that don't, you know, like what I'm saying right now. But in general. Like, um, back then, if a guy didn't want to wrestle a girl, it was normal. It's like, okay, he doesn't want to look stupid because for whatever reason. Now, if a man would say, I don't want to wrestle her, the backlash he would get, especially online, would be terrible. Oh, yeah. So it's the complete opposite of what it used to be. So, yeah, I did expect this. But I'm like, as for the roster... You know, I was like, usually they don't answer indie wrestlers or people who are not in the company or not in WWE. So that they all came together within five minutes of each other. And then, you know, no, it's not true. Or uh, one person doesn't blah, 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 which is really funny because, um, you know, everybody was like, hey, you know uh, what Nyla Rose said that, you know, one person's opinion doesn't mean it's everything. I took her exact same message and applied it to CM Punk two days later because after they were right on him because now he was the devil. And so I was the devil to it. Now they changed to him. And I just copy paste her message, changed the name for CM Punk instead of mine. And suddenly I was a bitch, but my God, her stuff was so good. So I was like, okay, I see, whatever. You know, I can't win here. Uh, and I know for a fact that it's, it's someone from the roster who texted everybody else to do that. But they, they all did it at the same time. I'm like, okay, whatever. And majority being female, too, which is yeah, a strange yeah, thing, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. They knew what they were doing and, without really saying what they were doing. Yeah, and it's all the same people that I called out. Seriously, it's all the same gang. Everybody else that's down there that don't get a spot or whatever, they, weren't, they didn't say anything. They didn't say anything at all because they know. They know. Like, so, like, I got emails from people saying, what you're saying is right, but they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to have more trouble. And some people wanted to come out because they had the same experience. But when they saw the backlash I had, they were like, I'm so afraid now I can't do it. Which, you know, I understand is fine because as much as I expected bad, <laughs> bad publicity, death threats and people going into on my every, every platform of social media telling me to kill myself, jump from a bridge, that I'm a nobody, that I you know, should be ashamed of whatever I've done when they don't even know my story. And all this actually, it happened right after MJF's uh, message that went out there and calling me a nobody. 
uh, that I was just frustrated I never made it. But hey, I'm still here. I still love wrestling. I didn't make it, and I know why. And as much as sometimes, yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's disappointing. I'm more disappointed than frustrated with everything because I would have loved. I have. I feel I have so much more to give, especially to the young generation as an agent, as a coach, that I feel like I would be so good at it. But you know, you go out there and you try to tarnish everything I did. Whatever, you know. Even if it's stuff like going to court for women's right and wrestling, just because you want to suck up to your boss and you pretend you're not a, you know, a company man, I'm sorry, you're, you're a piece of shit. Anyway, so many people told me he changed so much since he's there that they don't even recognize him. So I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit anymore. And, you know, some people like everything that's happening now. So many people are like, well, everything you're describing now in the news is what Lufisto said. So Lufisto was right. So, you know, slowly it's coming out. Why would I lie and put myself in that situation to get that backlash if it wasn't true? Like I had absolutely nothing to gain. So, no, you know, you wanted the you wanted the truth of why your women's division is so terrible. Here it is. You don't want to hear it. Well, it's still really bad and it's even worse now. So, and their matches, I keep hearing the matches are bad, but there's so many good wrestlers there. They're not featured or they're featured badly, but it's always going to be the same people on top because they are not going to change. And it is what it is. I love that. It is what it is. And there's not much you could change about it. But you know what? What I loved is that, yeah, you took a break from social media from a little bit to recover. Yeah. And, you know, you and I share a lot of the same mental health battles. I myself, two years ago, went through the darkest depression of my life. And I know how hard is it, how hard it is to crawl out of that. Uh, I think the best word to use, and I use it from my new favorite rapper, Dax. He's awesome. Uh, the abyss. When you go to that place that you create to escape, that safety net, when you're there so long, it's hard to see the way out. And without getting the help and taking care of yourself, you can check out in more ways than one and you could just close your eyes to that darkness or you could find a way to not surrender to that darkness, but to get comfortable in it mm -hmm. and to rise out of it. And I think you did that like the Phoenix rising from the ashes and I think you don't have anything to be ashamed about. You and I spoke so highly. It, it's weird. Every time we sit down, there's some kind of controversy happening. The first <laughs> time it was the CCW nonsense and all the stuff that was going on with the girls girls yeah. blood and, and boobies and all uh, that nonsense double d destruction double d <laughs> <laughs> you know it is it is a pretty clever name for a it tag is. team though i will say honestly, that honestly for a porn movie it's great it's it is. great it's it is. great like two twins or I, i'm not sure about family together but anyway it's a thing <laughs> adult but, films have taken a very dark turn themselves <laughs> tr oh i know like it's um it, it, I, i've actually edited if not people don't know i've I have two degrees in multimedia, and one of my first jobs I ended up editing <laughs> porn. I've seen shit I don't want to see ever again. <laughs> Beep me if you need to, but I was like... Slide into her. If you've got some adult films you need edited, I mean, she's available. She doesn't want to do it, but she's available, guys. <laughs> hey, listen. I went to film school myself. I have a degree in film and television production. One of the first companies that reached out to me was Vivid Entertainment, and I knew right off the bat if I did that, I could never be the next Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> I could be the Quentin Tarantino of adult film, but who wants that? Well, I mean, I mean, it, it's it's good money. I will say that it's, it's ridiculous how it's good ridiculous the money is. The contract money. offer I got, I won't say it now, but was ridiculous for the time. And I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, I could have all the money in the world, but it my comes... claim to fame is going to be the different <laughs> angle I get on the finishing shot." <laughs> like, I don't know if I want that. You know, every decision you make comes with consequences. Are you ready to, you know, deal with that for the rest of your life? It's like. Oh. To be the cum shot, could be the cum shot king of the uh, of the north. I don't know if I really want to do that. I'll be honest with you. We the north. We the north. That, that, there it is. There it is. Uh. But you know what? You came out of that abyss. You came out stronger, and now the fan reaction is coming back, and the fan surge is coming back in the the place that it deserves to be, which is on your side. And you knew you were going to get those AEW faithfuls that were just going to be like, no, fuck her, she's wrong, not going to tarnish my company. And it's like, you don't even really have any stock or say in the company. And here's the thing, I, I don't think I tarnished the company. No. I just answered an answer of why, because like, everybody's like, book the women better. Well, it, you can't book things better if you don't change a couple of things, and that's people at the top. You need to steer things around. And like I said, there's talent enough in that roster. 
how many girls are assigned compared to the ones we see on TV? It's always the same people. Uh, I'm thinking real quick, like we should see a little bit more Willow. We should see more Serena D. We should see more Mercedes Martinez, uh, Layla Hirsch. Uh, that's like a few. How many are there? Like I'm glad they're doing something with Chris Statlander, but compared to what they were doing with Jade and what they were, they're doing to her, there's no really storyline. It's here and there an opponent, and it's or if there's a storyline, it's within two weeks and it's gone. There's no major feud. There's so it's there's, there's no there's a quick build and then a quick okay and then let's move on. Yeah, and I mean it's it. Unfortunately, it's the same. Look at the Wimbley show. Everything's got booked in two two weeks or something for two a weeks show. that we know about. But it was that probably an know. hour before the show. To be honest with you. They didn't know what we were doing on that show. I was like 30 minutes before the show. So <laughs> it is. But I mean, it happens in other companies, but rarely have I worked for someone, including independent wrestling, where I'm at a show today. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know who against I'm wrestling. I've known for weeks. I'm like structure. You need structure. And I think Tony Khan has the passion for wrestling. He has the love. He needs to surround himself with people who say, hey, Tony, no, that won't work because not tell him what he wants to hear. And he needs to be open minded enough to say, you know what, you know this more than I do. And I'm going to listen to you. How the hell do you not listen to Harn Anderson? Beyond me. Beyond me. You have Mark Henry's there. You got the big show. You got Nigel McGinnis, uh, Christopher Daniels. Jerry Lynn. Taz. Taz. So many. JR, who's literally like, been look, a fixture at the, in the business. At all the positive people and things I'm naming right now. And you're surrounding yourself with the negatives. Yeah. It is, you know, so again, it is what it is. And I did not, you know, throw the whole company under the bus. Here's the problem with the women's division. Do something. But no, like I, the fans were like, oh, it's, I understand the passion. Um, like, I love heavy metal music. If you tell me it's shit, it's like, fuck. But you have reasons why you don't like it. I have reason why I don't like other style of music. It's the same thing for wrestling. I prefer watching strong style wrestling or very technical. Um, like, I tune in and I've watched Daniel Bryan versus Zack Sabre Jr. Because that's the type of match I love as a wrestling fan. But if you talk to me about more spotty lucha libre and i can't appreciate or how athletic and impressive they are but it's just not my style my favorite style of wrestling i won't say they suck or they should die and jump over a bridge because of that i i appreciate what they do and i i can't do it i I'm like so but not all is negative but you got to go with some people's taste as well and they just like right away they didn't even look they didn't even even talk to people who actually knew me well because some people say they know me but they don't uh, which you know um, well it is what it is <laughs> exactly it is what it is let's move on to uh, let's move on to a little bit more of a happier subject so you're here now new new frontier I'm one of the, I'm the color commentator of course I am I mean come on guys um, but it, we call ourselves wrestling redefined and you are facing Aiden Prince returning from injury in his debut match back here at New Frontier. Not his first match back since, mm-hmm. since post-injury, but debut match. And you were originally booked back a couple Octobers ago. Things, of course, didn't work out then, but you're here now. Yes. And you're literally taking on the Prince of Ontario, the Prince of Indie Wrestling here in Ontario. Not the world, but here in Ontario. And he's a fixture, but you're a fixture. But you know what he can do. I'm sure you've studied tape, and he knows what you can do. I mean, everybody knows what you can do. It's dangerously, like you said, you were ahead of the curve in the best ways possible. And you know what? I always quote Maria Canales when I say this. She said, talked about the women's revolution. The first ones through the door get the bloodiest. And unfortunately, my dear, you have been through too many doors first (laughs) to literally and figuratively (laughs) too many doors first to really go backwards. But now you're taking on Aiden Prince, who arguably does that style that you yourself, it's not your style, but he does that flippy shit. He mm-hmm. loves that flippy shit. How do you, I mean, not asking to give your strategy. Now he'll see this post-match, so we're not, he won't see any secrets. Mm-hmm. But what's the strategy going up against somebody who does the flippy shit as well as he does? Well, every time you go in the ring with someone like that, and as crazy as he is, you got to kind of use the same strategy of going 
you know, 110%. And as soon as he climbs up, you need to bring him down. I have to make sure he doesn't go up on those ropes. He doesn't fly the way he does. You attack the legs. Okay, if so he, you're Tanya Harding in this situation. If, and he's Nancy Kerrigan? Is that, is that, am I, much. am I aging both of us by mentioning those two names? Um, no, yeah, a little bit, yeah. but <laughs> we get the idea where if he can't jump, he can't do all these things. So no triple axles tonight. No, no, no. So I call it like the Bret Hart strategy. You go to the limb that they need the most and you target. So as you get, you know, into your not I'm not gonna say your twilight years because I still think you got a ton of years left but as you get into your I, more veteran years a day I go day, day by day day now, by day because I know I can't say I'm gonna retire because when I planned it I didn't do it things were going so well so no you know day by day match by match and once I'm just sick of it I'm just gonna stop but I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> not going to tell anyone. No. <laughs> but right now you're in the, that veteran years of your career and you are giving guidance to those who ask for it or those who want the guidance. And is there anyone or any uh, a funny story that may have happened or some inspirational story where someone, not even recently, but let's say the last two years, post-COVID anyways, <laughs> post-COVID where a young indie wrestler came up to you and was like, hey, can I pick your brain for a bit? And you ended up sitting down having the most amazing conversation. At the end of it all, you were like, now I feel like I can go for another 10 years just based <laughs> off this fuel that's been given to me. Every time I wrestle somebody, actually, that, um, it happened last, last week at IWS. I was wrestling Ichiban, and he's more of a luchador, and I was like, you know what, let's, let's revisit old Lufisto in the luchador years where I, where I was wrestling a lot in Mexico. So I started doing all those um, more of a, I would say, flippy-ish because I don't jump or whatever, but lots of quick arm drags and head scissors and things I haven't done like in 15 years. And what's funny is I've been wrestling for 26 years and I was wrestling someone who was 21. And everybody say that with Tariq's match, uh, my match was match of the night. So these two matches, me and Tariq's match were the two matches of the night. So I was like, not too bad for an old lady that would follow at 21 years old, but um, I could also answer your question that there was a, um, a hardcore match between Masha Slamovich and Del Miexo in Limitless. And they came to me, it's like, what could we do? So I've listened to each, like, what do you do? What do you do? And I put the match together with them and they had a great, great match. And I was as proud as them, like watching what they were doing. Um, than just me being in there. And sometimes I, I'm even prouder that my ideas, they work. And I don't even, yeah, I don't even care if it's not me using the ideas. Like I saw them having this great match and I made sure, you know, when you use a Naja, make sure you show it little, de I'm all about the little details. That's why um, I like training people from start, but not as much as taking someone who's already in it and then fixing things and adding stuff and details and you know adding on and making sure everything is scripts and everything means something during the match there is a psychology between everything you do you do and if you use that move why is it a better uh falsy than a hope spot or if you do it for your shine but I believe it's better for your comeback. Why is it? And then I play stuff differently. And I just love, love this. That's why I would, I would have loved to be an agent. I love doing that. And I, I really think it's one of my strengths. I, I can, um, I can kind of see how the crowd will react to something. I have this vision, I would say, of if I can see in my head things, how they will work out and how people will react. That's one of my strengths also, so that's why I think I, I would be a, a pretty good agent. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Now, I got to ask this. This is kind of a funny question, maybe a random question. You've probably been asked this before. But, I mean, you've been hit with everything and then some. Is there anything that you haven't been hit with that you're kind of hoping that one day somebody's like, you know what, I would like to use this in a match? Like something random, like an egg beater. I don't know. <sighs> Can you think of anything that you haven't used as a weapon or had a weapon used on you before? 
N not now, but if I would have such a match, I usually go around and see things like, oh, and then I get inspired by what, what's in front of me. Okay. Uh, I remember having a match with Vanessa Craven and they're like, there's a hardcore match. Like, what did you bring? Nothing. I was like, how can you like, they had absolutely nothing. So I went, walked around the whole venue. There was an old vacuum. There was a broom. There was like, um, you know, a garbage bags. I, and I used everything I could find, but it, you know, spur of the moment. It has to be there and I see something and I'm inspired. And I also broke a wall during that match. <laughs> I love that. I'm inspired by things that normal people would use for everyday things, but I use them for violence. Yes. Yes, I use them for I violence. I choose violence. I choose <laughs> violence, yes. Let violence reign. Now, in terms of your career, I mean, 26 years, just a week ago you wrestled somebody 21 years of age. That means you were five years in the business when they were brought onto I this know, earth. I know, right? And it's, it's it, you know, but it's a testament to your staying power, the ups and downs, the struggles, being outspoken, fighting, but making the changes that you've made in pro wrestling. And no matter what anybody wants to say, you are not an indie wrestling hall of famer. In my opinion, you are a wrestling hall of famer because, and I'm not kissing your ass, it's just for the simple fact that you have done so much that a lot of people really may not remember or not even care to learn your stories and your struggles. But I know what you've done because I pride myself on the research and I think that's one of the things you admired about me the first yes. time around is I always come in, even though it looks like the questions are off the fly, there's a method to my madness <laughs> of where I want to steer that conversation. But you have, again, done so much and changed so many things in maybe the littlest ways that people won't recognize. When you do look back on your career, the ups, the downs, the darkness, the abyss, the rising through the ashes, all the, the reinventions that you've made of yourself, what is the one period that you can sit back and even if you're reflecting, you're driving, tonight when you're driving back home to see your cats, and I know you have quite a few, to see your better half, who by the way, you're easier on the eyes than he is. I'm sorry, I appreciate his ability, but you are easier on the oh, eyes. People keep telling me he looks like Kevin, Kevin Owens. He, 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 he does, he does, he does. And once you see it, you can't, you can't unsee, unsee it. it. I know, there was a picture of him Somebody had him on his shoulder, and somebody's like, oh, that's Kevin Owens. I was like, no, no. <laughs> that's not Kevin. <laughs> no, it's not. I know. But if you look through <laughs> your whole career of everything and having that great mental support that you did with him by your side and your cats, who people don't realize, just sitting down petting an animal oh for God. five minutes, what a stress relief. I know. It's like having a squeeze ball, but don't squeeze it. Just love it. Don't squeeze it. Squeeze, like squeeze it like this. <laughs> but what is one period that you can look through with absolute fondness? and say that was just an amazing stretch of four months, six months, two weeks, two hours, two years? That's a tough question, but... I ask the tough I, questions, yeah, you know I this. Know, I know, But I feel, um, I always go back to 2019 when I, I was sure I was done. I didn't like wrestling anymore. It was over, I'm like, oh, my knee's done, whatever, whatever, like all kinds of excuses I was trying to make just to stop wrestling. And then I fell back in love with it again with, you know, the matches I had and the love I had for from the fans and from my colleagues. And it's like, you know what? I'm not done. I still have things to do and I feel great. I feel OK. So let's keep going and never mention retirement again and um, just go with the flow, really. And that period that that, that year really helped me with that. I, you know what, I would agree with you. It's ironic that, like I said, two years ago, so 2021, I think, was my, uh, it was December 2021, so I'm coming up with my two-year anniversary, when I looked down at, at, to that barrel of that figurative gun, and I was unsure, and then it took my wife, my two beautiful daughters, one who you sat down with five yes. questions for, go through the archives, check that out, it was a lot of fun, but I looked at them, and I even looked at my dog, my little pain-in-the-ass Maltese, <laughs> But she was there and it took a lot of good friends and my two sisters who I love to death, Deanna and Christina, they were a big instrumental help in all of that and, and finding that way out. And I look at 2021 as a year of rebirth for George. Mm -hmm. I refound myself and I'm not ashamed. Like I posted six months ago coming up on my 40th year and of life, not of in this business, <laughs> of life. And uh, coming up with my 40th year, and I posted about the reflection about how I was going to check out, and this is what I fight for every day. And I had a lot of love. I had one moron that just ran his mouth. Oh, there's always that. So I just, you know, I did, I, I did what anybody else would do. I just, I blocked that person and I carried on because not that I'm not going to let that one negative comment yeah. bring me down. I would normally let it eat me out or eat me alive, but not, not today, <laughs> not, not on that day. But I look at you and I look at the inspiration that you are. 
And if anybody's out there and they're struggling, like you and I have struggled, the advice I could give is go seek help, talk to whoever. It doesn't even have to be a therapist. Just talk, 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 keep mm-hmm. talking. But you yourself, what would be that one piece of wisdom that you would pass on? Because like I said, ADHD, it's right here. Oh if we God, look at this whole so 29 here. minutes of conversation, <laughs> we went from porn to Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame to Happy's Big Game. We went all I over know, the place. Right? <laughs> Yeah, story of my life. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like. <laughs> but what would what would be that one piece of advice that you would pass on to anyone that might be watching this and, and thinking that, you know, this is the end for them? When you think everything's dark, there's always a light somewhere. You just have to open your eyes and seek for it, look around. It's somewhere. Um, you know, I wanted to give up so many things so many times including life as a whole and then that person would come into my life that that opportunity that that little thing that means something and you know it's yeah look for the light it's out there i mean don't give up uh you know how many times i've fallen and I'm going to get back up. Like right now, like it, as stupid as it sounds, I'm 43. Guess what's happening? The hormones are like all messed up and I've gained weight again after I lost 35 pounds. Well, guess what? Not going to win. I'm going to find a way to see what's going on with my body. I'm going to fix it and work harder in the gym and starts from scratch again. But I just, yeah, keep going, keep going. I love that. I think keep going is a great way to end this. And one final question is a fun question. We just passed Halloween. You and I both love Halloween. We both love the darkness that is there, the the spookiness. (laughs) Do you have one horror movie that you yourself look at with fondness, but the rest of the world looks at with disdain? I do. (laughs) I do. I have one that is a guilty pleasure for me. And if you want, I can go first to let you know my... I will will reveal my, my guilty pleasure. It came out in 2000 and... 18, 2017. It was called Banana Splits. It was Five Nights of Freddy's for Five Nights of Freddy's, and I absolutely loved it. Okay, listen, you have not lived till you've seen somebody get put in that magic box and <laughs> cut by a giant animatronic elephant. And I have seen it, and I enjoyed it. And I go to it every year since I've seen that movie, and I paid 10 bucks for it on iTunes, and it was the best $10 investment I ever made. Do you yourself have one of those movies where you're like, it doesn't even have to be horror. One of those movies that you're like, this is, the rest of the world hates this movie, but for whatever reason, I love it. I, I don't think there's one, because the, what I would do when I was a kid, I would go to those video stores, things that don't exist anymore. Blockbuster, Jumbo Video, RIP. <laughs> yep, exactly. So every weekend I would go rent a Jason movie. One, two, three, four, and I would watch one every weekend. That's what I would do. And then after I was done with all the Jason, I did the Freddies. And so every weekend was a horror film weekend. So, and I started watching the older things and oh my God, it's so bad. It's good. Go see the blob and the thing. It's so bad. It's good. <laughs> John Carpenter's, listen, John when Carpenter, you could get yes. Kurt Russell, Looking badass in the middle of the Arctic, it's a good fucking movie, okay? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That was that was I escape from that was escape from New York. Yes. Just without the eye patch. <laughs> that's what it was. Yes. Well yeah, old school John Carpenter. I'm like, I even got the freaking uh soundtrack of his movies, you know. Love, love love it. So it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Go go see some gin- Old like John Carpenter stuff. Silver Bullet, Stephen King, so bad, but it's good. So good. <laughs> the makeup job is absolutely horrible, but for the times, it was good. It was yeah, good. you see a face kind of ripped apart, but you clearly see it's kind of glue. Oh, it's so bad, it's good. Yes. <laughs> oh, they don't. They don't make. They don't make horrible horror no, films like they used no, to. It's just they absolutely don't. Boring. <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, it's been a pleasure, an honor to sit down with you Thank again. You. Guys, tune in next week. And before I go, can you give some of that Lufisto energy and let the people out there know that if they haven't subscribed, what are they doing? God damn it. Just subscribe or I'll kick your ass. That's right. That's right. She will. I, I've seen it. I've seen it, guys. Well, that's it again. Thank you so much. It was such an honor and pleasure. Peace, love, and wrestling, guys. We'll see you next week. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on that notification bell so you get notified each time we post a video. Alternatively, you can check us out on all podcast platforms and host it on Podbean. We are also available on the SNME Network. That's the Sunday Night Main Event Patreon. Please feel free to check us out there as well. And don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at underscore Straight Talk on Twitter, at Straight Talk Wrestling on Instagram, Straight Talk Wrestling on Facebook, Straight Talk Wrestling on TikTok. And of course, you can check out all our merch at ProWrestlingTees.com. I don't need to make a